having your head in the clouds means that you are not paying attention and being out of touch with everyday life. I want to tell you a different story, how paying attention to cloud make you more receptive to what is happening around us, how you can help researchers and fight climate change. Cumulus, cirrus and stratus are different types of clouds. We name clouds after a classification system invented over 200 years ago. Physical processes in the atmosphere like humidity, wind speed and temperature will all affect the shape of the cloud. Cumulus lenticularis, as an example, forms on top of invisible waves in the sea of air. Energy is as vital to us as the clean air. However, with our energy use, we have changed the very composition of the atmosphere and started global warming. The air circulates in every living being and connects us through time and space. So climate change make it very clear. We are all linked together. I would like you to feel the same connection with the air around us and the same commitment to act against climate change as I do. So let's visit the Stavanger Art Museum. This timeline describes how we understand clouds and how they appear in art and our daily life. In these early days, we believed in gods controlling the forces of nature. In uh, Norse mythology, Thor with the sledge was the lightning god and freak goddess of love and destiny. She was also a sky goddess and is responsible for weaving the clouds. Here she is pictured while she is spinning cirrus clouds. In the Renaissance, we started to investigate and explain more of the world around us. Art and science were truly intermixed. Raphael was an architect and a painter. In 1514, he painted the famous 16th Madonna. And I guess you have seen this picture many times, but have you ever noticed all these faces behind Madonna? What did Raphael paint? Is it angels or unborn soul in the atmosphere? This timeline is all about clothes. Let me know add a story about energy technology. In uh, 1765, here, we invented the steam engine. Coal was the main energy resource at the time. And with this invention, the first industrial revolution started. We started to use the telegraph and thermometer and we made a huge advancement in how we simply understood the atmosphere. And now we are getting closer to the second industrial revolution. This was a time of impressive innovation and technological development. We got automobiles and airplanes and around 1870 we started to use the combustion engine. As early as in 1896, the Swedish scientist Svante Arrhenius explained the greenhouse effect and warned us that the global temperature is very sensitive to changes in the CO2 level. Svante's friend, uh, the physicist uh, Wilhelm Bjerknes, discovered how we better can forecast the circulation in the atmosphere and he modernized the field of meteorology. During this period, we became more and more dependent on fossil fuel. In Norway, the oil exploration started in 1969. We made huge advancement in the field of electronics, telecommunication and computers. We call this the third industrial revolution. In 1919, computer engineers began using the term cloud for external storage services. And here we are in 2020, in the middle of the fourth industrial revolution. 
Sensor technology and artificial intelligence will disrupt and transform the society, not at least the energy industry. Solar PVs and wind turbines are now very effective. But how can we store and share energy? We need more innovations. And this is what my work in Nysnø is all about. Finding the next energy innovation, invest in climate tech to reduce global CO2 emissions. In all this period, from 1800 and up till now, we've been using a lot of fossil fuels. The global temperature is rising and we are facing a dangerous climate change problem. The concentration of the CO2 level has gone from 280 to 410 parts per million. We need now to use our creativity and find new energy solutions. We are linked together throughout the history to the present time and over national borders and forward in time to the unborn souls of Raphael. I am reminded of this silver lining every time I look at the sky. Never before have we been as connected as we are now, because a new cloud is spreading, the digital cloud. We as humans are becoming data points. With a smartphone in our pocket, we are all geopositioned and traced and our needs and preference logged. And all this data are stored in the digital cloud. Cicero Center of International Climate Research have launched a citizen science project. They would like all of us to go out and find trails from airplanes. Contrails form cirrus clouds and are affecting the climate. NASA have developed an app they would like us to use. So download the Globe Observer and start observing the clouds and share your observations in the digital clouds. This is one concrete example of Climate Act. But I believe that looking at the clouds can motivate thousands of important climate acts. I'm struck by the beauty of the atmosphere, by the dynamic skyscape of clouds, and how the atmosphere shows us so clearly that we are all interconnected. Wherever we are, our actions impact everyone else on the planet. By caring for the atmosphere, we go to the very heart of the problem. Go out, look at the clouds every day. Let the sight move and motivate you in your daily life to fight climate change.